The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Brannigan's Bat, starring Stephen Dunn and Gail Storm. Jean Crane is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Sometimes you hear people say there's not much romance left in the world today. We're supposed to be living in a mechanical age, an age of machines when everything is measured in cold facts and figures. And yet every boy who falls in love with a girl to whom he pledges his lasting love, every marriage, the story of every home and family, is a wonderful romance. It's an adventure that goes beyond material things, for material things alone can never bring the happiness that's found in a good home. No, you can't buy happiness and love and understanding and peace. They aren't paid for in dollars and cents because all spiritual values depend on faith. Faith in God and faith in one another. Yes, faith is necessary for a happy home. That's why family prayer, the daily expression of our faith in God, is so necessary for every family. It's the romance of daily family prayer that brings sacrifice, service, and lasting love and happiness to a home. Jean Crane returns following tonight's family theater story, Brannigan's Bath, starring Gail Storm and Stephen Dunn. Baseball reporter, the boy with the portable microphone and the nose for news. And I'm stooping around the Bears' dugout here now in these last few minutes before the start of this crucial game, just to see what we can pick up. Uh oh, there she goes. That was Eddie Burlington again, taking the last of his pregame wallops. That ball cleared the screen by at least 30 feet. What a hitter. Burlington's coming over this way now. He's still carrying that big brown bat. He's wrapping it up in an old sweatshirt and hiding it under the bench here in the dugout. Hey, Eddie, come on over from this way for a minute. Well, hello. You want to say a word to your fans, Eddie? Well, hiya, folks. Oh, come on, Eddie, let us in on it. Wait, what's so special about that bat? What have you got in it, uranium? Nope, base hits. <laughs> well, the doubles and the triples are kind of built into the wood like, huh? Yep, and a few home runs, too. Well, look, I, I got to go. I got someone waiting for me in that box. Over there, back at first base? Yeah. Who is she, Eddie? Come on, come on, let's have it. Well, her name is Olivia Denny. She just got in from her hometown. Oh, your small town boyhood romance. Well, folks, it's a surprise hey, to hey, know. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Make me talk out of turn? I haven't even asked her yet. Okay, good luck to you, Eddie, and to Miss Denning, too. What do you know, folks? The rookie outfielder who's become the league's leading hitter is now going to become a bridegroom, maybe. Well, that sure is good news to all the fans. Now I see Joe McKnight, manager of the Bears over there, talking to Ryan, today's pitcher. Let's sneak in and try to pick up some baseball strategy. A little inside dope. Well, we finished with apple pie all the motor coffee. You can't beat that, Mac. Uh, at today's price. Oh, uh, sir, a buck and a half, including the tip. Well, come on out there and throw the ball past him. That ought to do it. Oh, hiya, hiya. How's the uh, microphone today? Oh, pretty good, Mac. Say, can you give the fans some of the lowdown on today's game? No, not now. I got to get over and pry that kid Brannigan away from that grandstand railing. We gotta get this game started. Hey, wait a minute, Mac. There are millions of fans here hoping you'll give us an inside story. Sorry, sorry. We're all ready to go. Hey, Brannigan. Eddie, get on your horse. Mac. Get on the field, boy. Hey, Mac. Huh? I hear your boy Brannigan is getting married. Oh, oh, says who? I was just talking to him. Say, Eddie. Huh? What's about this marriage business he's talking about? You've been carrying on right under my nose and I don't know about it. Well, I, uh, well, yeah, but, uh... Well, who is she? Well, Mac, I'd like to introduce you to Miss Olivia Denton. Eddie oh. Brannigan. Why, 
Why, you never proposed to me. Well, you see, I... Well, I've been a little busy. I... Hey, 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 you can't start proposing now. We got a ball game to win. Get going, Brannigan. Okay, Mac. I'll see you later, Olivia. big day today. That's his second home run. And sure enough, he's lucky to use bat around the bases with him. The umpire's objecting, so Brannigan's throwing the bat to Joe McKnight, the manager of the Bears. This has been a crazy game for Brannigan. I guess some of you folks heard about how he proposed before the game, and I know we're all wishing Eddie a lot of luck. Well, uh, it's a nice restaurant, huh, Olivia? Yes. Mm. Uh, nice dinner. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> good steaks. Yes, very good. Yeah. Uh, good game today, huh? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, some more coffee, Olivia? No, thank you. Look, uh, Olivia, what's the matter? Nothing. Yeah, but, but you're not saying anything. Eddie Brannigan, I'm not saying anything. What am I supposed to say? You're the one who was going to do all the talking. Then you were going to do the explaining. I've been waiting all through dinner for some idea of what this is all about. Well, well, I was coming to that, Olivia. I was working right up to it. But, well, you see, I... I... Gee whiz, I wonder if Mac wrapped up my bat before he put it away today. Eddie Brannigan, do you realize what you've done? You've invited me up to these games just for the fun of it, you said. And then you start this, this marriage stunt. What is it supposed to be, a, a publicity idea? Olivia, don't get me wrong. Look, I, I was going to ask you. I wanted to. I, I was going to. But well, sometimes things happen so fast they get out of control. And before you know it, well... Well, there it is. Yes, there it is, splattered across the evening papers next to the story about your crazy antics with your bat. But Olivia, I'm serious. About what? Well, about everything, honest. You mean all this business about your bat isn't some kind of a gag? Uh, look, Olivia, you don't understand. Biff Bailey gave me that bat. And who is Biff Bailey? Well, I guess maybe you wouldn't have heard of Biff Bailey, but he was one of the old timers, the best. He said that that bat would bring me luck, and it has. Oh, and I suppose I'm here because I'm going to bring you luck, too. Well, no, that's not exactly right. Well, that's what, what I... you said when you phoned me and asked me to come. Well, gosh, I didn't mean it that way, Olivia. It was just that, well, having you at the game and knowing that you were right here watching me, well, it kind of did something to me. You were doing all right before. Yeah, but, well, I, I knew if you were here, I, I'd do better. Gosh, Olivia, don't you see what I'm trying to say? Well, to tell you the honest truth, it's very confusing. All the newspaper articles, well, they kind of think that bat business of yours and everything is a bit crazy. But, well, I, I, I was hoping you'd understand, and you do understand, don't you, Olivia? No, Eddie, I don't. Oh, well, well, then I, I guess I'll... Yes, then I guess I'll be going, Eddie. Oh, wait a minute, Olivia, I, I thought you'd come with me. Come with you where? Well, I've got a date. Oh, don't look at me that way. It's it's with some kids in the children's ward at St. Luke's Hospital. I, I promised them. And I was hoping you'd come along. I think I'll get back to the hotel, Eddie. Well, Olivia, can't you see what I'm trying to say? What, Eddie? I... I love you. Gosh, I, I said it. And I'm going to marry you. Yes, even if you don't understand. Even if you were the most bad-tempered female in the whole... Edward Aloysius Brannigan, that does it. Wait a minute, Olivia. Please, please, wait a minute. Wait a minute! Mr. Brannigan, it was very kind of you to come to see the children. You don't know how much this means to them. No, don't Sweetie. thank me, Nurse Martin. I, I'm only sorry I was so late. I, I was delayed with some important business. Well, the children won't forget you. Well, I won't forget them either, believe me. Uh, there's one more I'd like you to see. His name is Stevie Ridder. He's hmm? in a private room right in this hall. Oh, well, uh, why the private room, Nurse? Well, you see, he's going to have an operation the first thing in the morning, so we have him alone for tonight. Right oh. here. Oh, I, I see. 
visitor for you, Steve. Well, well, hi, Steve. How are you today? All right, thank you. How are... Gosh, you're Eddie Brannigan. Yeah, you see me play? Well, no, I've been sort of busy. Oh? But say, why do you let Pulaski strike you out so much? Oh, well, <laughs> well, Steve, he's a, he's a darn good pitcher. But hey, how, how do you know about my... If you can bat 400 and lead the leagues in homers and runs battered in, why do you let Pulaski push you around, huh? Well, <laughs> well I guess I just haven't gotten out of his style, maybe. Why don't you go out and show him who's boss there? I... Hey, Steve, that's just exactly what I'm going to do. You know, he's pitching against us tomorrow. First time up, you know what I'm going to say to him? No. I'm going to stand right up that plate and I'm going to say, Pulaski, this one is for my friend Steve. Then you know what I'm going to do? Gosh, what? I'm going to knock that ball right out of the park. You mean it? Honest? That's a promise, Steve. But look, you, you, you got to promise me something, too. Sure, Mr. Brannigan. Uh, you got to promise me you're, you'll get well. Gee. I've been kind of sick for a long time. Well, you can promise me you'll try to get well, can't you? And real soon? How about that? Is that a deal? All right. I'll try real hard. Honest. Atta boy. And I'll be rooting for you tomorrow. Well, uh, so long for now, huh, Steve? So long, Eddie. And thanks a lot. Gee. Good night, Steve. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Good night, nurse, and thanks. Gee, I'm glad you brought Eddie in to me. Good night, Steve. Gosh, she's a... <laughs> she's a great kid. Yes, it's too bad he hasn't much of a chance. You mean it's as serious as all that? Yes, it's a very serious operation. Oh, oh that's my call. Well, thanks again, Mr. Brannigan, and come to see the children when you have a chance soon. Oh, yeah, I will, I will. Yes, I'll be coming back very soon, nurse. There you are, Mac. Use this pen, the special ink. Yeah. Yeah, you can write your name right here between Al's and Lefty's. Say, Eddie, what's the idea? Hmm? When did you start collecting autographs? Last night. How come? Well, it's, it's for a sick kid down in St. Luke's. I uh, figured he'd get a kick out of it. Oh, 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 I thought maybe it was for the future Mrs. Brannigan. Hey, hey, oh, hey. How did uh, how things go with you and her last night? Oh, fine, fine. Well, I, I think so, anyway. You see, <laughs> well, I had to do a lot of talking to make her see my viewpoint. But do you know... I guess women are hard to understand sometimes. Yeah, huh? so I've heard. Yeah. Well, let's see. There's Whitey and Pete, Lee, Joe, and Al. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's one autograph you forgot. No, uh oh, she's over in the box behind first base. I'll get her to sign it later. No, no, there's another one missing. Well, I don't think I forgot anybody. Let's, let's see here. How I... about uh, Eddie Brannigan? Well, gosh, how do you like that? I forgot my own. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's like you, Eddie. Well, there you are. Signed and sealed. Ah, uh, thanks, Mac. Uh, I'll run over to Olivia and let her hang on to the ball during the game. Well, don't get mixed up in too many things, Eddie. You got a ball game coming up in a few minutes. Yeah, and I got a four-bagger coming up, too, for a kid. That's one I promised. Good afternoon, baseball fans. We're about to win the second game in this crucial series between the Sox and the Bears. There's been a lot of activity around here today. The stands are jammed. Everybody's wondering what Brannigan... And his famous batter going to do against Pulaski. That's the Sox pitcher for today. Pulaski's the only one in the league who's got Brannigan tagged. Brannigan's been getting a lot of publicity lately. I see him down there now, leaning over the grandstand railing, talking with the young lady who's made the headlines with him just the other day. Yes, Pulaski. <laughs> Oh, but, but, gosh, Olivia, I thought when you had a chance to think it over, you'd really understand. Yes, I understand. I see you're pulling all the strings you can to keep your name on the front pages. Well, but count me out from now on. I thought when I was coming up here that you'd be the same Eddie Brannigan I always knew. But I see now how wrong I was. Well... I'll stay for the rest of the week. I'll see the games, and I'll go back and tell everyone what a great guy you are. But that's all there is to it, Eddie. Well, wait a minute. And I... whatever new gag you have with autographing this ball, you can count me out of that, too. Hey, hey Brannigan, get going. Well, Olivia, if that's how you feel about things, all I can say is you're wrong. You're all wrong. Brannigan, if you don't get off this grandstand railing, I'll pin your ears back. Ah, folks, this has been a tight game all the way. The Bears are trading by one run here in the last of the night. Eddie Brannigan is coming up to the plate. Eddie's been pounding that ball all over the puck, but he's been hitting right to the mitt. 
Sensational fielding has robbed him every time he's come up. And he's gone hitless so far today. He's at the plate now, waving that famous bat. Wind up, the pitch. Ah, oh, she goes! It's a long run, it looks like a home run. Whistles back, back, back. He leaps in the air, and he's got it! Oh, a beautiful catch. Oh, that ball was tagged for a home run. It went zooming out across that field like the super chief. But Russell leaped and made a terrific catch. That's a bad break, Eddie. You was wrong. Oh, pipe down, will you? Oh, never mind, never mind, kid. You did a job on that one. Let me alone, will you, Mac? Can't you see what happened? Look! Your bat! You broke it! Yeah, the splintered handle. That's what's left of it. Brannigan's bat. St. Luke's Hospital Children's Ward, Nurse Martin speaking. Uh, nurse, this is Eddie Brannigan. Tell me, Nurse, uh, how do you make out in the operation? Steve, Steve, I mean. Oh, oh, Mr. Brannigan, yes, he was talking about you right up to the time they took him into the operating room. Yeah, yeah, but how did he do? Will, will he be all right? Well, Eddie, you must understand, he was a very sick boy. He had only oh, one chance... Oh, no. Of... No. Well, at least he... He didn't know I let him die. He has very little chance, but he may possibly... Eddie, are you there? Eddie! I'm sorry, nurse. Your party hung up. Well, that's the end of the old ball game, and the Bears have dropped another one today. Brannigan, their big hope in the slugging department, has taken the rest of this team right into the slump with him. The Bears don't seem to be able to do a thing in this game today. They're really nose-diving right out of that pennant race. Eddie Brannigan, the one-time wonder boy, has everybody else still wondering. They wonder if he'll ever get another base hit. Eddie, it's about time we had this out. You're a big leaguer. You know what that means. Yeah, but Mac, Biff Bailey's bat was my... Don't give me any more of that broken bat routine. I've had enough of it. Now get this straight. Throw that superstitious hokum out of this ballpark or you're gonna wind up on the bench. All right, Mac. That's what I've been trying to tell you. That's where I belong. Well, now listen, kid. You don't mean that. You can't do that to me. Mac, let's quit kidding ourselves. I'm through. I'm... I'm washed up. And you know it, too. Olivia, this is Mac. I gotta talk to you right away. Yes? I'm down to 5th and Main. Can you meet me here in five minutes? Well, what's happened, Mac? I can't talk now. Meet me here. 5th and Main in five minutes. That's why I want to talk to you here. Eddie mustn't know that we're ganging up on him. I see. We gotta work together. So we can... Look, Olivia. You know what's happening. The whole ball club has fallen apart. And what am I supposed to do? Pull it together for you? Don't you understand? Eddie likes you. He's in love with you. You believe anything you say. I don't know about that, Mac. Now, listen. I've been up all night trying to figure something out. I got one idea, but I need your help. Eddie's convinced that without Biff Bailey's bat, he can't hit. Oh, and that's the most foolish thing I've ever heard of. Well, that's what I'm trying to say, but Eddie can't see it. So, I want you to tell him you found out from Bailey's widow where you could get another of Biff's bats. Then, we'll get a duplicate made. You'll give it to him. No, and... I won't do that. Not even for Eddie? Well, you know it means everything. I never lied to him. And if his baseball career depends on lies and childish superstitions, then he'd better get out of baseball right now. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, but it's too bad. Eddie had a great future. Maybe he just came up too fast. You know, Olivia, it's pretty hard for a young fellow who comes up in a hurry to keep his balance. Well, I thought you'd want to help him, but I guess... Oh, Mac, I'd like to help him. But he's changed so much. And all these publicity stunts. Like I, what? Well, the way he got that headline with his bad antics. And, and then how he started 
Oh, well, it's, it's been one thing after another, from autographing balls Now, to... wait a minute, Olivia. There weren't any reporters or photographers in on that one. He was doing that for a kid down at St. Luke's Hospital, and you can check me on that if you want to. No, there'll be no need of doing that, Mac. Listen, Olivia, all Eddie needs is someone like you to be with him, to talk him out of his batty ideas. Every guy who's gotten anywhere has had someone, a wife, a mother, somebody in the background to help him over the rough spots. And you think he can be talked out of what he believes in? What he's been living? He's young. He's just got some crazy ideas. If anyone can do it, you can. Eddie's a good boy, Olivia. He needs you. Why, uh... Why don't you have a talk with him? You can make him understand. All right, Mac. I'll talk to Eddie. But I doubt if it'll do any good. But, Eddie... How can you talk yourself into thinking your hitting depends only on a bat? Well, that's how it's been, I know. It's, it's, it's just that you don't seem to see it, Olivia. Well, I understand one thing. There are a lot of people who think you're a great guy. They have faith in you, in what you can do. Well, that only shows how wrong a lot of people can be. Well, I guess I'm all wrong, too. I believed in you. That's why I couldn't make out what you were up to when you were going on with all your crazy antics. I couldn't believe you were serious. But I was, Olivia, about everything. And, and most of all about you. I thought you'd understand. I thought that... Eddie, you know how I've felt about you for a long time. I still feel that way. That's why I don't want to see you ruin yourself, your career. Oh, why don't you forget about Biff Bailey? Take any old bat and go out and do your best. Oh, you know I've tried that, Olivia, but I made a mess out of things, out of everything. I'm through. Besides, I... Well, I broke a promise that meant more to me than... What promise? Hmm. Uh, guess it doesn't matter now. Kid's dead. Oh, you mean the one you were autographing the ball for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Autographs and all. <laughs> it isn't much good now. Eddie, what are you doing? What's happened to you? You threw it right through the window. Yeah, and that's the end of baseball for me, Olivia. You can go right back home. Yeah, and you can tell him back there what kind of a guy I really am. Eddie, Eddie, won't you listen to me, please? I'll be seeing you again, Olivia. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, good evening, Mr. Brannigan. There's a message here My for key, you. My key, please. Yes, sir. I was about to write down the message just came message. in. Message? What, what is it? Uh, Miss Olive Denning is uh, at St. Luke's Hospital, and they want you to... Hospital? Well, what happened? Well, I don't know. I, I suppose... Well, never mind. Call me a cab. Fast. <laughs> Miss. Miss. How is she? Ooh. Olivia, uh, Miss Miss Denning, where you got her? Oh, oh, you must be Eddie Brannigan. Yeah, yeah. Well, well she's in room one ten. It's right down the right. Hall. Well, what do you know about him? Hello, Eddie. Uh, Olivia, well, you you you're not in bed. You you're walking. Well, of course I'm walking. What on earth is? Oh, honey, honey, honey. I, I thought I. Well, I was so worried. I. Oh, Eddie, I'm all right, but you're. Squeezing the breath out of me. <laughs> Is this the fellow who doesn't love you anymore, Olivia? Oh, Nurse Martin. <laughs> Don't you shush me, young lady. There's been entirely too much hush-hush stuff in this whole affair. Now, Eddie, you listen here. Yes, yes, ma'am. You may think your fairy stories about wonderful bats are very entertaining, but don't try them on me. No, ma'am. Particularly when I've got a pretty good idea what's really bothering you. You understand? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Now, come across the hall, both of you. I want you to say goodnight to a friend of mine who's been waiting up much too long for a little fellow. Well, uh, Hello, Eddie. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Stevie! Why, I thought that... Well, Nurse, you told me that... Well, gosh, kids, you're all right. Eddie, I promised you I was going to try, and I did. Uh, yeah, Stevie's going to be all well again soon. But you'd better go to sleep now, Stevie, so you'll be fresh and rested for tomorrow, and Eddie can pay you a real long visit then. Yes, Nurse. And Eddie, yeah? you know I didn't get to hear that broadcast the day you hit the homer for me. But I can listen to the game tomorrow. Can't I, nurse? Do you think he should, Eddie? Oh, do I? Steve, you just go ahead and latch onto that radio tomorrow afternoon and don't let anybody pry you loose. I'm going to hit two home runs tomorrow, and I'm going to hit both of them for you. Gosh, you mean it? You betcha. Honest? That's right, Stevie. Well, I guess that should take care of you, young man. 
Good night, Stevie. Good night, boy. Good night. You know, Eddie, if you believed in yourself half as much as that kid believes in you, you'd be able to hit those two home runs with my old umbrella. It's a deal. Oh, come on, Olivia. See you after the game tomorrow, nurse. Now, wait, I was joking. You bring that right back this minute. Oh, why, Eddie, what are you doing with Nurse Martin's umbrella? Oh, that's no umbrella. That's Brannigan's new bat. And I'm going to hit two home runs. Ah, uh, this is a great game this afternoon, fans. Brannigan is really back in tip-top form. It's the last half of the eighth now. Brannigan do it the plate again. He's over at the bat rack, picking out a bat. Hey, Eddie, why don't you use the same bat you poked out the other home run with? Oh, forget it, Mac. From now on, any old stick is Brannigan's bat. This is Jean Crane again. You know, like Eddie Brannigan in tonight's play, many people at times get a little twisted in their viewpoints. But there's one thing all of us should always be certain and definite about. That's the importance of our families, the important part home should have in our lives. You know, we get out of anything only as much as we put into it, only as much as we put into it wisely and intelligently. And we can't expect peace and understanding and happiness in our homes unless we have a positive program of action. That's what family prayer is. That's the purpose and value of family prayer. It's a positive program of daily action to bring our family closer together. God is the most vital influence in everyone's life. He shouldn't be forgotten in our homes. And mothers and fathers who make daily family prayer a practice in their homes can feel secure about the future of their children. Faith in God, a determination to live up to what's right and decent, consideration for others, and appreciation of a kindness given. All these things come to a home when God is there. When a family joins together humbly and sincerely to express their thanks to God and to ask his help and blessing. Yes, it is true. The family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Stephen Dunn and Gail Storm for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Erwin Lieberman for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Ken Christie, Hal Berger, Ruth Parrott, Gilbert Barnett, Joe Graham, and Charles Maxwell. Next week, our Family Theatre stars will be Victor Moore and Una Merkel in Gramps. Your hostess will be Claudette Colbert. This is Jean Crane saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Victor Moore and Una Merkel with Claudette Colbert as hostess. Meryl Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.